my name is Lorna from Lorna Tutors and I am a VC English tutor. Um, nice to meet you. I've worked with over 100 students. I know numbers aren't everything, but I've worked with over 100 students. I've clocked like a few hundred hours of tutoring and I've done free resources, paid resources. I've worked with a school. I've done a few volunteer lectures. Um, and yeah, I just have a lot of experience in VC English. I will say it's one of my passions. I definitely love it more than I loved it in year 12 when I was in year 12. Um, and I know a lot of students don't like it. So hopefully I can make it a little bit more enjoyable for you. Today's video is going to be about text responses, more specifically how to study for the text response. Um, I've created a bit of a checklist for SAC preparation and exam preparation for the text response. And this video is going to basically go through that. But yeah, um, again, if you have any questions, please leave it down below and I hope I can clarify for you. Anyways. So I guess our first question is, what is a text response? Um, so my motto before discussing something is that we must define it, right? So the definition of a text response in the VCA uh, rubric is pretty long. I will give you my version of it, but if you just want to take a look. This is like the Vika definition. It's pretty fat. Um, quite a lot of dot points and like give it a read in your own time. Obviously knowing the rubric is important and maybe I'll go through, I'll make a video going through the three and four rubric, but I'm just going to give you a more simplified version today um, in my own terms. A text response is an essay discussing interesting opinions slash perspectives in response to a prompt of the text slash film you were given, right? So you're responding to the text or you're responding to a film, but it's called text response. Um, and in more detailed terms, <clears throat> it's you responding to a prompt um, through an essay format. So giving me analysis, insights, ideas. I want to know your interesting, unique thoughts and opinions. I do not want regurgitated Wikipedia or Sparknotes summaries, although shout out to both those websites. They can be helpful for your understanding, but you, what you get marks on and what I'm going to base today's study strategy on are these three things. One, how well you answer the prompt. Two, how interesting and well evidenced your opinions are. And three, how you can do this through the medium of essay writing. This brings me to my three step strategy for text response study. I've created a little checklist that I will be showing today. I don't know which way this is gonna, screen is gonna be showing, so I'll just show you like snippets yeah, on the screen. But you can download this on my website, lornatutors.com. Very straightforward, just my name and tutors. Um, and you can download this free PDF and print it out, stick it on your wall, whatever. My study strategy is this. I like to divide it into three different sections or three different purposes. One is understanding the text what is going on uh two creating meaning this is like the analysis part so if you think of it like a teal paragraph this is the a right the analysis whereas the other one is e evidence and then three is essay writing which kind of talks about the whole paragraph i guess and i'll go further into this but basically understanding the text creating meaning and essay writing first one we're going to talk about is understanding the text or film if you do not understand the text you cannot write something about it, right? You cannot give me a developed, sustained, nuanced, insightful opinion of whatever the prompt is asking you. For example, let's say I asked you, what did you think of South Park's ChatGPT episode? If you haven't watched it, but you have like a basic understanding of ChatGPT and its impact on society, let's say, you might be able to say something generic like, oh, South Park is saying ChatGPT is taking the human element out of social interactions, right? Which is true in some ways, uh, but you won't be able to tell me anything specific about how South Park does this, right? How South Park's medium, visuals, characters, plot arc, and symbol slash motifs convey this idea in their own specific meaningful way. And you, yeah, you won't be able to give me the specifics, which is what examiners are looking for and what I am looking for. So in this section of your studying strategy, your goal is to collect as much evidence as possible. Things you can do um, when you are in this section is obviously, 
obviously reading the text or the film that's a no-brainer if you're having trouble understanding it like for example i had a bit of trouble understanding like shakespeare's language in some of his plays i would go on spark notes and try to like understand it better through like the translated like modern english summaries but i'd still recommend you use like the original source material and just like use spark notes or whatever as a way to kind of consolidate it consolidate your knowledge and like go oh okay this is what it means right to annotate slash take notes of key moments or important things again feels very obvious but a lot of students don't do this because they think you need to write like big meaningful annotations or paragraphs when it's like no you can just kind of go through underline something and go this feels important or you know highlight something and go cool keyword cool quote might chuck this in later right but even with these little tweakings it helps you develop a closer knowledge of the text right it helps you familiarize three create a quotes bank i like to put it in a table format and put it under specific characters or specific themes which leads us to the next thing create a notes create notes uh divided by themes slash character headings um and i will do another video on character analysis and theme analysis but i think organizing your evidence like this it's just neater you know and when you're like through when you're studying you can kind of go oh look this prompt is about witchcraft let me just flick to the witchcraft section and then you've got plenty of goodies that you can chuck in for evidence right it kind of neatens up the process instead of you know you being disorganized and going oh i can't think of any anything on the top of my head because chances are you've probably written something nice when you were feeling more refreshed or in class and something your teacher said that was beautiful which brings me to my next point you should discuss this with your friends uh if you have friends <laughs> i'm just kidding you probably do if you don't have friends like join my discord server message me on ig um and i have like little text-based study groups but you can join if you have friends too i guess but yeah you'd be surprised how much insight you will gain from simply just discussing the text with someone else i'm a tutor right but that doesn't mean i know all or i see all teachers don't see everything either i learn so much from my students they will bring up such interesting ideas in lessons that i'm like oh wow i actually that's such a good piece of information that i don't even you know clock um and that's like the beauty of talking to people and discussing ideas is that everybody brings something to the table everybody has their own perspective and picks up on unique things and you might actually like get a lot of really good interesting stuff from your friends so why not just discuss it together have a little chat about it and yeah it will help consolidate your knowledge of the text and film and you'll remember it better because it's a conversation with a friend oh i forgot to add it here breakdown prompts plus create arguments so in this section i would ve really really recommend you get a few practice prompts and with your knowledge of the film just write a few answers to the prompts so these these answers will obviously become your topic sentences in terms of like essay but in terms of this exercise it's just going to help you start developing actual opinions actual you know interesting takes and the most important thing that you need to remember is that not every prompt is asking you to agree with the prompt sometimes it's asking for you to disagree but i will make another video on that which prompts are asking me to disagree but yeah you don't always have to say this prompt is true sometimes it's inviting you to disagree with the prompt like uh you know you get something like i don't know isolation is bad discuss right or do you agree you don't have to you don't have to agree you can say isolation is sometimes good because what if you're in you know a community of crazy people you don't want to be around them maybe you want to isolate from them right but the point is like start thinking of your own opinions and oftentimes your own opinions will be rooted in reality and you know things you've experienced in real life and your own real opinions and that's the great thing about english it's not just like this random faraway fairy tale thing a lot of these themes are rooted back into our societies and our lives so that brings me to the next point creating meaning everyone can write an essay but not everyone can extract meaning and convey it through an essay format uh and this is where you will you'll flex your writing skills and your brain um in this section your goal is to learn how to create analysis for the evidence you've extracted 
And how you can do that is pick a piece of evidence that you collected before and figure out the deeper meaning. And I know that sounds easier said than done, but that is exactly what analysis is. So, you know, my advice, and I'll make a bigger video on this, but my advice is zoom in on a small key detail, a small piece of evidence, and try to extract as much meaning from it as possible, right? Um, for instance, like in the dressmaker, there's a fire. People will say the fire represents rage, right? But let's go further into it. What kind of rage, what type of rage does the protagonist have towards the community, her family, herself, right? The patriarchy. How, why does fire represent rage in this instance? Is it because it's burning down all like the people's houses that she hated? Or is it representing that she's like a phoenix that's like rising from the ashes and like becoming reborn and like starting a new life you know just kind of going a little bit deeper and again analysis oftentimes is your own opinion so you know if i was to write a book let's say i would use fire as a symbol or motif for you know rage and you know i don't know <laughs> look <laughs> i'm getting there but try to ask yourself like why do you think the author why did the author like pick fire right <laughs> what is this supposed to convey um if i was the author and i picked fire like what, what would i be trying to convey with the fire what is connected to the fire um what is the cultural symbolism of fire what does the fire do in this context like blah 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 blah, blah. but there's a million things you can do and you see how instead of like picking up the whole book and being like oh i need to analyze this whole thing right now what you should do is zoom in on a little piece of evidence because it's easier to kind of analyze deeply like a piece of like one piece of evidence rather than go i need to create analysis of the book immediately right so yeah basically you can even go through your previous evidence notes and like draw a line and then like analyze it analyze it you know to go through literary devices slash film techniques techniques that's kind of similar to what i said before except this time you're kind of using more specific devices if you're doing a film by the way you have to mention film techniques i am pretty sure this is in the vka rubric you have to use film techniques so let's say in rear window um there's like a mise-en-scene which is basically like a shot that I think shows like or like you see what's in the room or like in the scene like how things are organized what's in there what are the colors how is everything positioned and framed etc and you know you kind of want to learn what the film technique or the language technique does or like it's supposed to do and then you want to tell me in conjunction what is in there so let's say sorry that was really bad but um let's say that uh okay the first one of the first shots in rear window is jeff's room and there's a camera and it's like kind of gloomy and ugly uh and like there's like newspaper clippings what is this telling us about the main character you know try to analyze why they put the scene that way so to me i'm like oh newspaper clippings of war stuff okay he like does stuff about the war oh there's a camera maybe he's a photographer oh this kind of looks like a bachelor pad oh like the room is designed to like reflect a lonely single bachelor's life or whatever but you see how like that technique plus the evidence equals analysis right that's what i extracted from it and Another recommendation is to read an A plus sample essay and take note of how they analyze. Sometimes you're just not gonna know how to analyze. Sometimes you need a little bit of inspo. I'm a bit like that in uni. Like sometimes I haven't seen uh, how a particular assignment or like case report is formatted and I have no idea what to do. I maybe don't do well in the first assignment, but then let's say that I look at a previous student's work and then I realize, oh, this is how they organize it. Okay, that actually makes sense to me. I will start organizing my stuff like that and it might I might not do the exact same thing but it provides me a little bit of like a structure slash guidelines on how like the way they analyze the you know kind of like what examiners like kind of like a little bit of inspiration like oh I don't know that like you could pick up part evidence like that I don't know you could you know do this with a quote right so even just getting a little bit of inspo from like an A plus sample essay I think could be really helpful for you yeah and also you could obviously like not steal, but like incorporate a bit into your own work. Don't plagiarize, that's illegal. That's really, really illegal. And you will get kicked out of uni for it apparently. Um, or so I've heard. 
so don't do it. I will make a video on how to write analysis, but just please understand that analysis is a core part of VC English studying and honestly other things that you do in life and other like other things in uni that you do it'll be a slightly different type of analysis but analysis is a very important skill so kind of think of yourself like a little detective and there's evidence and there's like a prompt and you're the detective trying to like figure out the string that connects both and respond to that i don't know that was a really weird analogy and then the last part is essay writing if you have perfected the above two sections, uh, but you cannot put together the mechanics of a beautiful essay, I am sorry to say this, you are not going to get a 40 plus. But the good thing is essay writing is not that insanely hard. Um, it's just that I feel like a lot of schools skim over it or don't focus on it as much. Uh, in my experience and also from what my students have told me, a lot of teachers will focus on like you really understanding the text and you like getting good pieces of insight analysis but where students start falling short is putting that beautiful insight and analysis into an essay format right so these are the things you can do to get better at that one write a timed essay I I mean paragraph paragraph I would recommend putting a timer on for 15 minutes and trying to write it within 15 minutes uh, this way, like, you also have a bit more stamina and you can, like, kind of mark it and then do another one. Mark it and then do another one and your improvement is a little bit faster, right? But another thing you can do is obviously write a timed essay where you have to, you know, figure out how to write everything in one hour. Obviously, the English exam is three hours with three essays, so you're going to need to practice a little bit of that writing stamina. Another thing that I forgot to put in here, but I'll put in now, is writing an essay plan writing a really good essay plan can help you feel a bit more organized in your head about everything um it's kind of like you go to the gym and the first time you go to the gym you're not gonna do everything like you're not gonna do 100 reps of anything if that's even a thing what you're first gonna get what what's the first thing you're gonna focus on is getting the correct form when you get the correct form that's when you slowly build up to do more reps right so that's kind of what like essay planning is for me you plan the beautiful structure of an essay and you kind of want to replicate that um but, but faster in the future in exams so start early and that's the same thing as in my next point which is write an untimed paragraph slash essay spend as much time as possible to make it perfect so that you have the form ready you know you've got like the physique but eventually you want to build on the pace and build on the ability to like you know, break down the prompt quickly, you write an intro quickly, you write the paragraph quickly within the time limits of the English exam. Another thing that I recommend is marking your own work. Uh, you can get free paragraph marking checklist at lonatutors.com under free resources. Um, and it's gorgeous. It's my favorite tool. And I've, it honestly helps students improve so much because you start realizing where you fall short in paragraph writing, right? And it helps it also like your teachers are have a lot of things to mark and a lot of things to do and they can't always get back to you promptly so if you can mark your own work you're going to improve a lot faster and this uh, little rubric will also sh highlight to you what you need to improve on you can also get your work marked by a teacher or a friend or a tutor um and last but not least you can read a sample a plus essay and take note of how they write the essay how they structure things how they signpost by the way i have a free signposting resource on my website as well if you want to check that out but yeah just getting an idea of how other people construct their essays could be really helpful to you um that's also another general piece of advice read more the more you read the better you will be at like expressing the language like that because it will start like seeping into your head um, and I know like your 12s, you don't really have that much time to like do a spare thing, but if you can just read a little bit before bedtime or like pick up a book that you like, even if it's Goosebumps. I read so much Goosebumps when I was in primary school um, and graduated to Stephen King. But if you can just like find any type of book that you like, that will actually help you with your writing skills so much. So peep that. Here's my conclusion. Um, try to divide your study into these three sections, but if you're really good at one, focus on the others. With your weakest section, Focus on it more. First tip, perfectionists, stop. You are not gonna get a perfect 
the point of studying is to get things wrong and improve, right? To figure out where your weaknesses are and improve. Uh, and write something poorly and improve. Some people will never improve because they are so afraid of getting something wrong. But the truth is, before you get better at anything, you're gonna be kind of bad at it, right? That's just life. So the sooner you accept that you might write a crappy paragraph, the sooner you will write a good paragraph. <laughs> time management is key. That's why I recommend doing timed paragraphs, especially because at the end of the day, isn't an essay made out of several paragraphs? Um, and also, just a personal opinion, you might be different, but essay writing is probably the most important part of this whole thing. Just because a lot of schools teaching styles focus on analysis and like breaking down the text or the film, but skim over how to convey this in an essay. So I feel like you, this is also where I see most of my students struggle. Like they get what's going on. They have beautiful insights. Like when we discuss things verbally, they have great analysis. They have great takes. Sometimes like they shock me with how like, how beautiful like their analysis is but they can't put it into an essay and i'm like look if you can't put it into an essay your examiner is not going to give you the marks so i recommend you spend a lot of time there if you can i will also link you to my website which has free resources <laughs> i look so funny that's me don't judge my website i am not like a web designer so no laughing but yeah Shout out to my friend Quinlan who took gorgeous photos and shout out to Wine and Willow which is a gorgeous bookshop slash wine slash coffee store. It's a really cute place, like gorgeous. Yeah, I got like a bunch of nice photos for my website, but my website, pardon me, my website quality is not giving right now, so please do not judge me. And then if you click all resources, you will see all my resources. I'm going to be starting to add on-demand tutoring sessions, so if you want to like just click and buy a tutoring session, bam, there you go. But obviously it's like a recording of like a specific topic or whatever. I'm also gonna be putting out study guides, but there's gonna always be free resources on here. Okay, so if you click on free resources, um, please feel free. Sorry, I, I've like done so bad on my website. I promise I'll edit it. But I've got the signpost sheet, I've got a paragraph marking sheet, and after this video, I am uploading the text response checklist. And you can just download it, print it out, and like, you know, check it every time you have a text response coming up or check it every time you have an exam, like the VC English exam coming up, and it's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be a really good way to guide your studies. If you ever download the checklist and forget what to do with it, just watch this video again. Also, again, to appeal to credibility, which is another English thing, here's my testimonials page. All of these people were like, she's so good. Why is she so good? No, I'm just kidding. But like, I have experience, you know, and, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, like, I love BC English, and I've been doing it for years and years, and it's just really fun teaching. So, you know, I hope that I make BC English a little bit more enjoyable and understandable for you. And yeah, like, think of me as your online tutor. You can follow me at Lorna Tutors on TikTok or Instagram. I am a little bit more responsive on Instagram. Or obviously you can find me on TikTok where I feel like most people know me from. And this is my website, lonatutors.com. I will always be updating things on there. But yeah, um, I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, obviously leave it in the comment section below. And thank you so much for watching.